Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another weekend look around the yard and gardens. Today we have a beautiful sunshiny day with very limited wind and no rain. So let's see uh, how long that actually lasts while we take a look at basically what's growing on. This last week has seen some phenomenal growth in the uh, pumpkins, the squash, the corn, and has really made some, well, made some basic observations possible in uh, what's going on with the grass mulch in the tomatoes. So let's take a look at some of those things. So let's start with the tomato patch this year. I mean, it looks pretty chaotic because I don't have any sort of framework for these to be supported by. And in half of the cases, it seems to have worked out all right. I would say these Cherokee purple tomatoes, while they have flopped over, you can see it started over there and it's kind of growing up here. It seems to be able to support itself and I see lots of flowers on pretty much all of these plants. So they're doing okay, but I have noticed with these, uh, I still wanna say they're better boy tomatoes. Here's a really nice example. This is more of an indeterminate variety of tomato. And I think this is one of the ones that I'm gonna to wanna to trellis next year. And I'm pleased to say that I had not previously noticed these guys hanging there. That is lovely. And then up here in the front, this is the uh, broad ripple tomato. This one, I am pleased to say, I think I'm gonna be able to plant these in the ground from seed and get a harvest. So that's probably gonna be one of my tomato experiments next year, is just to see if I can start those well, that way, avoid the whole aphid war situation with them, transplanting, hardening. If I can find a tomato that grows that quickly, you know, well, I'm gonna take advantage of that opportunity because it's Manitoba and it's a really short season here. But I wanted to talk to you in particular about the grass mulch that you can sort of see left in some places here. And where the mulch is still there, we've got a pretty decent job of weed suppression going on. I mean, I have pulled 20 gallons, like five, four or five gallon pails of thistles out of these gardens this year. Um, and there are still plenty more growing in there, but <laughs> they're a very stubborn plant. So anybody who's got them growing around their yard and gardens or in their pastures can, can attest to that. But um, for the most part, like I was saying, it's done a really good job of suppressing unintended plant growth. But in some of the places where, let's just sneak through the plants here, um, it was just a thinner layer and the worms have eaten it down. We can see, you know, the soil has crusted. I've got cracks growing in there. I might as well be back in the Penticton Valley for, uh, you know, the heat damage on that soil. At the same time, take, uh, oh, we got a little clump over here. So we'll just pull this kind of back. And underneath that, we've got no cracking. We've got lovely powdered soil, easy for, for water to penetrate. So I definitely need to do a thicker layer in the future, but it's clearly, I mean, if that doesn't say that the mulch is saving me moisture through um, evaporation loss, I don't know what whatever will. So that definitely proved the case to me. And I am even more sold on grass mulch than I was before. I just, now I know my soil biology is very, very active. I mean, look at these plants, right? Could there be any doubt? And I need to feed it more. <laughs> Not enough ground cover on here for a single season. So that's a good learning though, because that means if the soil biology is consuming that, the plants are consuming the leftovers from the soil biology, because as I said in a previous video, it's kind of a cycle of theft or um, recycling, however you want to look at it. But look at these tomatoes, like so many flowers on each and every one of these plants. I don't know if you can see that little frog down there. I've got tons of frogs here this year. It's incredible. So I don't know if the season is gonna allow these things to really finish off for me, but I do know that those better boy tomatoes up there are the ones that I'm saving seeds from because these all came out at the same time and those are the first ones putting on some actual fruit for me. So those are the genetics I wanna keep. Now I just kinda of make my way out here carefully get around and that brings us to the three sisters garden look at this beautiful corn and actually yes 
let's look at this beautiful corn. Last week, I was starting to see the beginning of these tassels, which obviously had me very excited. It became the name for last week's video. But this week, I'm noticing a lot of extension in between the leaves. And at my points of extension, I'm guessing these are the beginning of cobs. I didn't get too many of them last year, so I don't have much to go by. But not seeing any tasseling on these uh, suckers that came off the side. However, I am certain they collected an awful lot of sunshine before these pumpkins smothered them. But I wanna look back at this particular corn because we've got the baby bump on the bottom here and the beginnings of an ear there. Baby bump here, beginnings of an ear, baby bump, beginnings of an ear. So this one seed is producing me at least the beginnings of three ears of corn. And I have to say, I doubt, strongly doubt, that I even got a ratio of one ear to corn for every 20 seeds I put out last year. So to me, this spacing, at least for plant growth, is going a long way towards proving itself. I mean, look down there, can you see all of those big, beautiful squash flowers? And this one, I mean, this is a male flower, but look at the size of that thing. That is huge and it is just packed down there. This is the um, baby sugar pie pumpkins, I believe. And we'll look a little further up here and we can see where the beans are starting to fight back, push up for a new canopy. Oh, can't wait to get looking in there. Actually, I think from this angle, I might see a bean. We're gonna have to wait in, but we'll do that from the other side and check on those beans. This vine here, this is a pumpkin coming all the way from the back, having a great time of it. This is also a pumpkin that has come all the way from the back. As compared to, these are the spaghetti squash that were actually planted up here. Got some interesting things going on though. This log looks like it's gonna be great for presenting the harvest this year. Got a little squash there. I don't think that one's gonna make it. I worry when the blossoms don't look so hot, but over here, that one's looking pretty positive. So this has just been a really interesting idea and I may just leave that log there. I'll shift it over a little bit so it's a little more centered because I do like my symmetry, but uh, otherwise, push the spaghetti squash so they can come over here, cover up the unused pond this year. We've got the planks over it, so if we see any larger squash forming, we can kind of support them on that. But that's gonna give it a lot more, I don't know, access to sunshine. So here we are on the other side of the corn, where once again, I got one, two starting on that one for sure, one over there. But one of these plants, yeah, I think this might be it. Looking at it here, I see one, two, looks like a third one down there. And so it does look, to me anyway, there's one, two, like spreading them out is gonna work for me as far as making stronger, more productive corn plants. And I mean, there's no arguing with the size of these stalks this year. That's just, that blows me away. But I wanted to look into the beans when we got over here. And thankfully having like a foot in between each corn plant gives me a little bit more confidence with where I step. Although I think I just broke a corn leaf. So let's look down in here. I think what I saw as a big bean was in fact a thistle stem. Oh, hmm, could be some beans in there, eh? Wow, sirs, look at that. Well, that's delicious and tender. Gonna be nibbling on that. And yeah, these, some of these leaves on these pumpkins are you know up to almost my hip, so that's darn near three feet. This is really impressive. I am so thrilled with the Three Sisters Garden this year. Show you what's going on with the potatoes here in a second. Couldn't resist the nibble moment with that bean, so had to cut the camera there, but look at this. So in the middle now, we can quite clearly see where I actually made the black thumb potato bed. And we can also clearly see that the potatoes have grown up and flopped over and kind of abandoned it. Not a whole lot of flowers on here. But since they can be left pretty much indefinitely, um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have 
dug around a little bit in the straw and it's kind of one you can sort of see a mussed up patch there and I did find what felt like a potato but it, it felt um, a little more on the wrinkly like used up seed potato side of things than it felt like on the fresh smooth baby potato side of things Ooh, I think we just discovered a bean one of the royal burgundy beans seems to have been nibbled on by something but we can still take a couple chunks out of that so that'll be lovely oh yeah and speaking of beans um, you may recall the chicken planter where I put the individual plants in here the lonely sisters garden if you will maybe we'll take a quick boo at that before we're done today too but this just I come out here every day and I look at this and I'm so impressed by the growth this year when I compare it to uh, well just my previous attempts in gardening in the soil um, and in general I mean I've never grown aquaponic corn so I'm not even sure how that would work but that's an adventure for a larger yard anyway the chickens planter so the chickens planter also known as the lonely sisters garden has uh, been moved to a slightly sunnier location and that has been just a great benefit to it we can see the popcorn plant is looking much healthier we've got one corn one pea one bean and a whole bunch of parsley down here we were looking at it and we kind of pulled this forward and look at that there's this huge stash of beans that was hiding back there. So we're going to harvest those today. Uh, nothing like some salt and pepper butter beans with dinner. The joys of, you know, growing your own, growing fresh. Oh, I guess there is one other thing we should check on too, but oh, look at that. I think that is the first pea. And while there are lots of other things that I would just love to run around showing everybody in the garden, um, this I think is one that particularly bears mention. Here we have our cutting from the air layering experiment. And I don't see a lot of new green flushing out like I had hoped, but uh, I do see a lot of old green that's just staying on there just fine. So I'm hoping that that has been successful. Like I say, weeks and months will lead into it before I get any sense of certainty but right now it looks really good and clearly did no damage to the main bush to make that additional one out of it so a little bit of cleanup on here we could have half a dozen of these plants by this time next year and that is super exciting because there's not another penny invested and that's all just that four dollars spread out so yeah if you've got a garden center near you and it's safe enough to go visit Hmm, might not be a bad time to consider clearance prices on things they haven't been able to sell this year. So, you know, if masks and gloves and hand lotion and all that stuff is required, then do what local regulations say, but do consider trying to find yourself some clearance permaculture planting options. And on that note, that's where I'm going to boogaloo today. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me in the yard and gardens. And uh, if you've got any thoughts on what's going on with that corn and uh, the fact that there do appear to be multiple cobs forming on quite a few of those stalks, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I've got some quick beans to harvest and uh, share with my little woman. So I will talk to you all next time.